master exercise first and we'll go into strength training. So I have this divided into three sections. We have the heart, blood, nice red, red blood cells, and then we have scale of the muscle. Let's first talk about the heart. There are a lot of wonderful adaptations that happen to the, the heart with the exercise. You get an increase in stroke volume. Stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped at the left ventricle of your heart per beat. Every time your heart contracts, you have two atria, two ventricles. Two atria contract together, two ventricles contract together. Every time the ventricles contract, you squeeze out a certain volume of blood. During exercise, that stroke volume increases by a lot. In fact, the difference in stroke maximum stroke volume is huge between a sedentary person and a highly trained endurance athlete. One of the biggest differences between those two people is how much blood is being ejected with each beat. So maximum stroke volume will increase by a lot. So if maximum stroke volume increases by a lot, what would you think would happen to a person's heart rate during exercise? It would go up, but if we are able to squeeze out a huge amount of blood with each beat, then the heart doesn't have to beat as many times per minute to inject the same amount of blood per minute, right? So the heart rate will actually decrease. So it increases during exercise. But you take two people, one who's out of shape and one who's fit, and you have them exercise with the same intensity, the one who's fit will be exercising at a lower heart rate because their stroke volume is high. So it's much better, it's much more efficient for the heart to maximize its stroke volume capabilities because then it doesn't have to beat as much. So we get an increase in cardiac output. So stroke volume is the volume of blood being injected at the left ventricle per beat. Take that stroke volume and you multiply it by your heart rate, and you get the volume of blood ejected out of the left ventricle of the heart per minute, and that's your cardiac output. At rest, it doesn't matter what kind of level of fitness you are, everyone has about the same resting cardiac output, about five liters per minute. Every minute is about five liters. It changes a little bit depending on whether you're a big person with a large blood volume or a small person with a small blood volume. But everybody in this room, just sitting here, you're circulating about five liters per minute of blood. The difference is during exercise. If you take some couch potatoes and during exercise, their maximum cardiac output when they're biking or running as fast as they can, their maximum cardiac output somewhere is around 20 liters per minute. Then the other side of the spectrum, you have someone like Lance Armstrong or other highly trained endurance athletes whose maximum cardiac outputs are around 40 liters per minute. So think about how much that is. Anybody in here living in other countries familiar with liters? Is there anybody in here? always been in the narrative of our lives, but we do things in gallons. How many liters are in a gallon of milk? You go to the supermarket, you buy a gallon of milk. How many liters is that? It's almost four. It's almost four. It's 3.78 liters of a gallon. So imagine the heart of Lance Armstrong or some other highly trained endurance athlete when they're exercising as hard as they can. If, four, if you say one gallon, if you just say it's about four, for argument's sake, 10 gallons, almost 10 gallons of blood is being circulated through your systemic circulation every minute. That's unbelievable. So in a trained state, it's unbelievable what the human body can do and what the heart can do as a muscle. We also get an increase in heart contractility, the ability of the heart to squeeze blood out, and the ability to contract forcefully and quickly. That improves the cardiovascular exercise. And then we decrease the heart rate at rest at the same absolute intensity we just talked about. Because stroke volume increases, we can then allow the heart rate to decrease to maintain the same cardiac output. So the body is always trying to do what it can to maintain a specific cardiac output because cardiac output and blood pressure are closely linked. Blood pressure equals cardiac output times the resistance to blood flow. So if we can control cardiac output, we can control blood pressure. And controlling blood pressure is paramount for our survival, almost above all else we have to control blood pressure. And so we do that by controlling resistance of blood flow through the vessels and then the cardiac output. Then we can increase the venous return. The venous return is the return of blood to the venous circulation after it goes where it has to go. And the oxygen is used wherever it's used, whether it's skeletal muscle, your liver, your kidneys, whatever. Then it comes back up to the venous system. So you can think of the heart as a center of this circuit. We pump blood out through the arterial circulation to wherever it has to go, and then we, from those organs, it comes back up to the venous circulation to the right side of the heart. And for the 
the right side of the heart, the blood goes to the lungs to pick up new oxygen and dispel carbon dioxide. And so the venous return is the increase of blood back up to the venous system, back up to the right side of the heart. And then an increase in the size of the left ventricle we get from cardiovascular exercise. I've always thought that out of all the adaptations that we get, that increase in the size of the heart is one of the most elegant adaptations. Because the larger we can make that left ventricle, the more blood it can hold. The more blood it can hold, the more blood it can pump. And the more blood it can pump, then the more oxygen it can get to the necessary places. And so if you want to improve your aerobic capabilities, you want more oxygen getting to those muscles. So if we enlarge the size of the heart, it's a fantastic adaptation that allows us to do that. So I always tell people that as a distance runner, I have a greater capacity to love because I have a larger heart. <laughs> Of course, that line has never worked for me in a bar. <laughs> and then we increase the ejection fraction. If the stroke volume is the volume of blood being pumped out by the ventricle of the heart per beat, the ejection fraction is just a fraction of blood being pumped out. So ejection fraction is usually used in clinical settings. Cardiologists will look at a person's ejection fraction. They want to know the fraction of blood being pumped out during rest and also during exercise. During maximum exercise, a healthy heart will pump out about 80% of its blood out of the ventricle because the heart also needs a blood supply. So we're not going to pump out 100% of the blood because then there's no blood left for the heart itself. The, blood, the heart also needs a blood and oxygen supply for its coronary arteries, for its function. Because the heart also has to contract just like other skeletal muscles. 